Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for intermediate algebra. This is section 7.6, which is rational and quadratic inequalities. Now, we introduced inequalities, linear inequalities, uh, at the beginning of these video lectures, or at the beginning of the semester. And so we should be somewhat familiar with solving inequalities. But now we're going to look at ones that may be rational, which means we might have uh, some variable in a denominator, and quadratic. So we'll have some x squared term. So how would we go about solving this one? Well, since it's not linear, if I simplify this just a little bit, I'm going to distribute that x. We're going to get x squared plus 8x is less than negative 15. And now that I've simplified it, maybe I recognize that this is a quadratic. Well, when we have something that's quadratic as an inequality, we essentially treat it the same way we would an equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it set to 0 on one side. I'm going to add 15 to both sides. So this is my inequality in standard form. I have 0 on one side. And the reason why we do that is it kind of narrows down what we're actually looking for. Whatever this function or this uh, value may be, it has to be less than 0. So essentially what I'm looking for are values of x that make this negative, less than 0. Now, to find those values, we're, we're going to write what's called a related equation. For a moment, we're going to just say, well, what if it was equal to 0? And by doing this, the values that we find are something called critical points. So if we set it equal to 0, this is our related equation. We're going to solve it for 0 and find those values, our critical points. Well, this particular uh, quadratic factors, the factors of 15 that sum to 8 would be x plus 3 and x plus 5. x plus 3, x plus 5. 3 times 5 is 15. 3 x's and 5 x's is 8 x. So now if we solve it, we find that x would be negative 3 or negative 5. These values are what are called the critical points. They are not solutions to our inequality. They're solutions to the related equation. What we're going to do is use these as a tool to find the intervals that make the original inequality true. So what we do with these values is we put them on a number line. I have negative 5 and negative 3. And what I can do now is just choose test points in order to find whether it makes it a true statement or a false statement. All right, And this is the one we're going to use, because it is the same inequality. It's just written in standard form. So if I pick a test point, I look in this region, I cannot use the critical values. They are just there to break up our number line. So I'm going to pick a value out here. I'm going to choose, let's say, negative 6, because that would be in the interval less than negative 5. If I plug that into here, I get negative 6 squared, which is positive 36. Negative 6 times 8 is a negative 48. Plus 15, is this value less than 0? Well, 36 minus 14 is a negative 12. Negative 12 plus 15 is positive 3. It's a positive value. Are positive values less than 0? No, they are not. So this is a false statement in our inequality. So maybe I write out this interval is false. Let's test a value within this interval. Well, between negative 5 and negative 3, there is a nice integer I can use. So I'm going to test negative 4. I can go back to this equation. But for time's sake, I'm going to recall that this does factor to this value. So maybe this is a tool you might want to use. Otherwise, you could just plug it in there. I'm going to choose negative 4. And when it's in a factored form, I just have to say, well, is the value going to be negative? Is it less than 0? If I put a negative 4 in here, negative 4 and 3 is a negative value. 
It doesn't matter what that value is when it's in factored form, just the fact that whether it's positive or negative. Negative 4 and 5 is a positive value. Now I just have to think, what's a negative times a positive? A negative value. Is a negative value less than 0? Yes, it is. So by using this form of our inequality, I was able to find it with less work. So this is true because a negative value is less than 0. I don't even have to know what that value is, just the fact that it's negative. It's sine. Lastly, we, can, we have a third interval, and we should always test each interval. If I choose a value in here, well, what's a value greater than negative 3? Well, I could go to the next one, which would be negative 2. But I like to use 0, because 0 makes my life easy. If I add 0 to 3, it's positive. If I add 0 to 5, it's positive. A positive times a positive is a positive value. Positive values are not less than 0. So this interval is false. So the only interval that I found that makes it true is between negative 5 and negative 3. So from negative 5 to negative 3, and the reason why I didn't put in my parentheses yet for interval notation is I go back to my sign and say, well, this original sign is less than, which means not equal to. It does not include the critical values. This is the solutions from negative 5 to negative 3. Any value in between there will make the original inequality a true statement. Let's look at another example. Here we have something that's even of a higher degree than a quadratic. We have an x term times an x term times an x term. So it's x cubed. But fortunately for us, it's already factored. So we can find those critical values if we wrote this as a related equation. And let's just for a moment pretend that it's equal to 0. The critical values that would make it equal to 0, I can use the 0 factor theorem. Well, what value of x would make this 0? Well, if x equals 0, what value would make this factor 0? If x is a positive 6, what factor would make this 0? Well, if x was a negative 2. So these are my critical points. I'm going to use them to break up the number line. So we have the smallest value of negative 2, we have a 0, and we have a 6 on our number line from least to greatest. So I have four different intervals that I need to test. I have the interval that's less than negative 2, between negative 2 and 0, between 0 and 6, and greater than 6, four different intervals. So I'm just going to start by choosing test points. And fortunately, fortunately, it's in a factored form. That's going to make my life easier. Because when I look at this inequality, it says greater than or equal to 0. Greater than 0 would be positive value. So all I really have to assess is whatever I plug in has to make that positive. So let's test negative 3. That's a value less than negative 2. It would be in this interval. So if I put in a negative 3, this value would be negative. If I put a negative 3 in here, negative 3 and negative 6 is a negative value. Negative 3 and positive 2 is a negative value. A negative times a negative times a negative is a negative value. We have an odd number of negatives, which would make this multiplication negative. Negative values are not greater than 0. So this interval is false. Now, if I choose a value between negative 2 and 0, well, let's say Negative 1 is my test point. And please do not confuse your test points with your critical points. That happens quite often when we're working with numbers. We may transcribe the wrong one. But make sure that these are just test points. They're not going to be in your final answer. So if I test negative 1, this first term would be negative or a factor. This factor, negative 1 and negative 6, is also a negative. But negative 1 plus 2 would be a positive value. Well, a negative times a negative is positive times a positive is positive. So two negatives, an even amount, that's going to be a positive. When, it, when we multiply, positive values are greater than 0. So since this is greater than 0, it's true. We have a true interval right here. Let's pick a test point here. 
Something between 0 and 6, well, let's choose positive 1. If I put positive 1 in here, well, positive 1 is positive. 1 minus 6 is negative. It'd be negative 5, but I'm just concerned that the factor is negative. And 1 plus 2 is a positive 3. So I only have one negative here. If I'm multiplying these factors together, that would be negative. Are negative values greater than 0? No, they are not. This interval, again, is false. Let's choose a value out here. Let's say, well, the next value would be 7. That's greater than 6, and it's in that interval. If I plug 7 in here, it's positive. If I put 7 in here, 7 minus 6 is positive. 7 plus 2 is a positive value. A positive times a positive times a positive, of course, is positive. Positive values are greater than 0, so this is true. Now, to put the answer in interval notation, which is the standard uh, form for these inequalities, I just find my true intervals from negative 2 to 0. And now I have to determine, well, are these endpoints included? Well, since they were critical points, and it could be equal to, and if we notice, uh, one thing I failed to mention is domain. This has no domain restrictions because there's no roots and there's no x's in denominator, so there's no restrictions. It can include, because it's equal to 0, these endpoints. So from negative 2 to 0 is this interval, and it includes its endpoints because it could equal 0. Then we have this interval over here. From 6 all the way to infinity, this was true. It includes that endpoint. But of course, when it comes to infinity, we always use a parenthesis. And since I have more than one interval, hopefully we recall that we have to use a union symbol. I am uniting these intervals, because this or this will make this a true statement. So this is the solution to this inequality. All right, I have this one here. I'm going to leave this one for you to try yourself. There are no domain restrictions. So we can go ahead and maybe factor it and find those critical values, put them on a number line, and choose test points. The true intervals are the solutions to this inequality. All right, let's look at this one here. We have a rational inequality. Here we have, essentially, a fraction greater than a number. And we have some variables in here. The first thing we want to do is identify domain. Because this is a rational inequality, we have an x in the denominator. So I'm going to recall that I can never divide by 0. So whatever this value is, it cannot equal 0. So I'm going to solve it. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So 2x could not equal 1. I'm going to divide both sides by 2. x cannot equal 1 half. This is our restriction. <clears throat> and it's also going to be one of our critical points, one of the values I'm going to use to break up the number line. Now, now I'm ready to actually do something with this equation. I want to put it into standard form, which, this inequality, which means I want to have 0 on one side. Well, how do we clear a fraction? Just like we did in the equation. So if we write a related equation, just to find those critical values, I can clear this fraction by multiplying through by the least common denominator. Well, there's only one denominator, so this is the value that is my LCD, 2x minus 1. What I do to one side, I do to the other. So if I multiply this side, this reduces to 1. x plus 4 equals, well, here I have to do some distribution, 4x minus 2. And now I can solve for x. I'm going to subtract an x from both sides and add 2. So I get 6 equals 3x. Divide by 3, I get x equals 2, or 2 equals x. This is the other critical point that I find. So now I have to go back to this domain restriction. I have x cannot equal 1 half. And then x equal to 2 is my other critical point. Again, we just put it on a number line. 
Well, if uh, this is 1 half, 2 would be further down to the right. 1 half and 2 are my critical points. From this point, we just test intervals. So maybe I want to pick a value less than 1 half. Well, I'm going to choose 0 as my test point. If I put 0 in here and 0 in here, well, those terms are 0. I get 4 divided by negative 1. Is negative 4 greater than 2? No, it's not. Negative 4 is less than 2. So that's not a true statement. That's false. If I choose a value between 1 half and 2, well, let's choose 1. 1's in between 1 half and 2. If I put 1 in here, I get 1 plus 4, which is 5. If I put 1 in here, I get 2 minus 1 is 1. I get 5 divided by 1, which is 5. 5 is greater than 2, so this interval is true. This is one of my solution intervals. Let's choose a point out here. I'm going to choose 3 as my test point. If I plug that in, 3 plus 4 is 7. And 3 times 2 is 6. Minus 1 is 5. 7 divided by 5. Well, 7 fifths, which would be 1. 0.4, well, 1.4 is not greater than 2. Or maybe you just recognize that 7 over 5 is a value less than 2, right? 10 over 5 would be 2. This is less than that, 7 over 5. So this is not true. That's a false statement. So of my three intervals that my critical points broke the number line into, I only found one interval to be true. So I'm going to write that in interval notation. And here's where we need to be careful because Domain restrictions are never included. So that's a parenthesis. Up to 2. Now, is that 2 included? This says it has to be greater than 2. So it's not included. So I use a parenthesis. Had this been a greater than or equal to, it would have included this critical point. But never a restriction. All right, so that's my solution. From 1 half to 2, any value in between there? will make this a true statement. Let's look at this one here. This one here, I kind of like it. Uh, it's an additional example. And uh, what it does is it combines both, both a rational inequality and the methods of quadratics together. Because we notice we have x's on both sides of this inequality. The first thing we do is determine any restrictions. Well, just like the last one, we have that same denominator. So our restriction is x cannot be 1 half, because half of 2 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. I can never divide by 0. So I have my domain restriction. Now I have to find any other critical points. Well, I can clear this fraction by multiplying both sides of the equation by the denominator. And when I do that, this reduces to 1. And this side is 2x squared minus x. And actually, we're doing a related equation because we're changing it a little bit. So this is our related equation because we're just looking for the critical points. Notice what I have here. Now, because of that x on the other side, we have a quadratic. So now I have to solve this quadratic using quadratic methods. Well, hopefully we recall, always set these equal to 0. And if I do that, I get 2x squared minus 2x minus 4. And I can solve this using quadratic methods. Well, I notice that they all have a factor of 2. So I'm going to divide all the terms by 2. 0 divided by 2 is 0. 2 divided by 2 would be 1x squared. Negative 2 divided by 2 would be negative 1x. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Now, if we notice this, how would you go about solving this quadratic? Maybe you'd use uh, completing the square. Maybe you'd use the quadratic formula. Or maybe you notice that it factors. Factoring is going to be the easiest and my first go-to method. So it factors to x minus 2 and x plus 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Negative 2x's plus 1x, a difference of 1x, negative x. So now we know we have critical points of positive 2 would make this factor 0, and negative 1 would make this factor 0. So we have 2 and negative 1. This 
And these are my critical points. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to leave it for you to test these intervals and find the solutions to this inequality. So this has been section 7.6, Rational and Quadratic Inequalities. Thank you for watching.